Welcome to another episode of Backlog Weekend, the show where we take my backlog, take the whole weekend, and use all that time to complete one fresh new kit. My name is Louis from Louis Loves Minis, and today we're taking a look at my commissions backlog, and we're after a quick win. Because as you've been watching the series, our previous episodes weren't exactly the best in terms of accomplishing the task of this show. Today we're taking a look at a small miniature and one character and seeing how we were able to complete this guy. And I'm happy to report, we've just taken one day to finish this guy. Highlights and all. Congratulations to us. So when it came to building this guy, he was a simple monopose. The client also wanted me to follow the box art style. So it's a simple base wash and edge highlight. And if you notice here, I use my Tamiya liquid cement as a way to also sand some of the tiny mold lines that I've seemed to have, seemed to have forgotten. I do this in a previous episode as well. As long as the plastic is not that thick or protruding, the Tamiya liquid cement can melt that extra plastic away. At the same time, and also the sharpness of my good pliers. Whenever I can, I just bend off or snap off some of the parts of the sprue that are easily removable. Be wary, this technique is not to be used in all parts as you could end up damaging the parts you'll actually use. But you'll also notice here, when I drilled out the gun barrel of his blackout pistol, I've also started carving out the top portion just to add a little bit of an accent or more of a embellishment to the gun. I then proceeded by pinning the figure onto the terrain piece that came with it just to make sure that this guy would be sturdy as he's tapping a bit precariously on this ledge over here. Plus he's a gaming piece so these things are prone to fall. Pinning will really help make sure this guy is sturdy. He, he actually did fall a little bit a while ago. Mikey, my client, if you're watching this, the fall wasn't too high and as you can see he's still fine from that fall and survived without a dent. Before we moved on to priming, you can see I sub-assembled this guy accordingly and as to save the different colors of my primer and also save the painting steps, I've primed Kai Van Schreik. Damn, I don't even know how to read this guy. I've primed him in black and the rest in gray. One of the interesting parts of painting this process is really how I painted the white. I know white can be intimidating, especially if it's white on black. And I really just follow Games Workshop's tip by starting a first base coat of a grayish, greenish white. And that gives an easier foundation for the white base coat to go over. Same with the other episodes, I'll be posting the full paint scheme below. But the main trick here to remember is when you do have a black primed miniature and you need to paint white over it, find a mid-tier color. That middle layer can cover the black and that white can cover the middle layer. You don't want something like a red to go on top of the black because white may have a hard time covering that red. A grayish off-white color is a good rule of thumb to apply first. So as you can see here, the two different tones of white are very evident. The white on the arm has just the first mid-tier color and the white on the helmet has the final base coat and you'll see the difference of the coverage and at the same time the saturation of the white. Plus you also don't need to apply multiple layers of white to get this effect. I just applied two layers of paint all in all. So as I'm base coating this miniature, I have organized the base coats according to the wash that they are going to be treated with. What I mean by this, in order to save a step, I group all the colors that are gonna get a black wash together and I do all those colors. Then I hit it with a black wash. Then I do all the colors that I'm gonna hit with an Agrax Earth Shade, then hit it with one wash. I talk about that in this video here where I sort of condense the way I, how I follow Warhammer tutorials. But basically, I group together the colors according to the washes and trim down the steps needed to get through the base coat and washing stage. And if you notice, I also changed the color of our base and terrain feature. I may not have followed the box art for this one, but he is a very dark miniature and he does not have a lot of accent colors aside from the fact that there's 
a little bit of blue and red so I went with the complementary or contrast color which is green and I dry brushed him really 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 lightly just to contrast that dark miniature so you have something dark above and then you have a really popping color that's very bright at the bottom to really distinguish him from the rest of the base. Not that he needs distinguishing already, I mean he's already freaking standing up on top of the base. If you want to learn more on how I select the colors of my bases, there's a video that I'll be linking here. The claws were quite interesting. They turned out fairly fun or fairly impressive. Uh, I really just basically glazed on some contrast paint and layered on two layers of base coats. A light blue and then a white and it turned out to be fairly effective. I was very happy with it. Sometimes the most intimidating effects don't need complicated techniques to pull off. Before we get on to highlighting the miniature, let's build him up again. Or rather, let's complete the build. And as opposed to using Tamiya Liquid Cement, my favorite glue product, uh, we need to use super glue for this one because remember in the previous episode of the series, I talked about how Tamiya Liquid Cement melts plastic and it will melt the paint that you applied on. So you want to use CA glue to uh, complete your sub-assembly so as to not ruin the beautiful paint job you've accomplished so far. And then now we're on to highlighting. So edge highlighting, I have an episode about that all here. But what I did not cover in that episode was the fact that I used these little guys over here or this jeweler's glasses over here and these have saved my life. Or, well, not necessarily saved my life, but these have made edge highlighting a lot simpler. The favorite effect I get when I look at the edge highlighted miniature is it sort of blows up the miniature making it look bigger than it already is. I've felt that the, the finer the edge highlights or the finer the lines, the more convincing they are and the more they make the miniature look bigger. So I bought the jeweler's glasses not just to help my eyesight, but I found that when I use these jeweler's glasses, they magnify it and they play a little trick on my mind whereas I feel like the edge highlights are, I apply are a little too thick, but when I take them off, they're actually just the right size, at least for my preference. So that zoom in sort of like plays some tricks on me to make sure I'm not making too thick of edge highlights. And it's a good way to train myself, plus save uh, my eyesight. So this is definitely a good investment. These are very cheap. There's no brand on these guys or there's no, I don't, I've never heard of someone prefer a brand, but I've seen this specific uh, design all around. But you just want a sort of magnifying tool to help you with your edge highlights. So before I show you guys the finished product, I do want to talk about a little bit of, about my client because I do plan to feature him on my new series if you've seen it on, the, on my last upload. That series is called PHC or the Philippine Hobby Community and it talks about anything and everything under this country's hobby community and my client for this miniature is the tabletop traveler mikey cuento is a board game designer and avid connoisseur of board games and has now gotten into war games which is why he's asked me to paint up this miniature for him so he's a very friendly guy he's into the miniature hobby right now and if you go to his page he's very 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 well into the mathematics teachings knowledge and whatnots of game design. He's published a few games as well and is, and is working on publishing a few more, so you might want to check out his website. So thank you guys for everything. So thank you guys for every so thank you guys for watching up to this point. This is a very short episode. Again, this show is about putting a positive light on backlogs and how one, we can overcome our backlogs, and two, backlogs are gonna be there forever. They should be your friends. Backlogs are there because they give us so many choices and so many ways to satisfy whatever mood we're feeling at the current moment. So don't feel any pressure to finish anything right away. Of course, if you do feel that pressure, you could always try something like Backlog Weekend for you to just trim some of the edges. But I don't expect to be obliterating my backlog anytime soon. A backlog is part of any miniature hobbyist arsenal and it's there to show how much we love the hobby. I want to make this show my way of telling you guys that it's okay to have a backlog and that you can deal with that in any other way you can. This is just my own personal way of doing it. So 
the next time you have a look at your backlog, look at it from a different perspective, have a think, and see how you can encourage yourself to paint more minis. This has been Louis from Louis Loves Minis, reminding you to hobby every day to keep the sprues away.